always ask me, if you love caring for babies so much, when are you gonna have a kid? So, I have a kid. I have my first baby goat. Yes, my first kid. Oh, did you guys mean human kids? <laughs> no. <laughs> I thought you meant goat kids. Mm. So I'm fostering my first baby goat and her name is Phoebe. She's about two or three weeks old. And we've been having so much fun this week together. So I thought I would make a video to tell you five things I've learned about being a goat mom. The first thing I learned is that baby goats need to be with you at all times. And that's not an exaggeration. At first I envisioned that I'd be able to kind of keep her in a playpen throughout the day and I set up this clear playpen in the living room with hay and water and blankets and I kind of thought that that would be where she would stay but right away she was like, no, 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 I am going to be free roaming in your house. And I was like, oh, huh, very interesting. She made it super clear the first night that she would not be sleeping alone, that she needed to sleep with one of us. When we started to get ready for bed, we left the room for like, 15 seconds and she started screaming and screaming looking for us. I thought maybe she would settle down, but after about a minute of the loudest screams ever, we realized one of us was gonna have to sleep with her. So Andrew offered to sleep on the couch with her and the next morning, this is what I walked out to. So cute. So the next night I offered to sleep on the couch with her and then we kind of realized why don't we just have her sleep in our bed? So she sleeps in between us and she's incredible at falling asleep and staying asleep while we are sleeping next to her. I wake up just once in the middle of the night and she comes into the kitchen with me to eat a snack and then we go right back to bed. So she's an incredible sleeper as long as she is with us. Otherwise, she would be screaming. I'm right here. I'm right here. Yeah, I'm right here. Yeah. Hi. I'm right here. Hello. Come here. Come on. Yeah, I'm right here. She needs to be with one of us so badly that if I even go use the restroom and I don't bring her in with me, she will just scream and scream and scream. Where's your mom? <laughs> Did she go to the bathroom? So I usually just let her go in the bathroom with me. So you might think, wow, that sounds really needy. Phoebe's got some attachment issues, but you have to consider her species. Goats are herd animals and they have to be with other animals in order to stay safe. So if a goat is alone and they're not with their herd, they're really at high risk of being killed by a predator. Now consider that she's a baby goat and she's dependent on others for food. And it makes a lot of sense why she's always got her eye on one of us to make sure that she's not wandered away from where there's somebody who can keep her safe. When you're caring for a baby goat, what I've learned is you really do have to be within their eyesight at all times. And as long as she knows where I am and is pretty close by, she's really content. She'll kind of just sit next to me while I'm working or play in the same room as me. But if I leave the room, she comes with me. The second thing I've learned is that when you're fostering a baby goat, you use diapers with them. This makes a lot of sense because baby goats cannot be trained to use a litter box or a pee pad. And of course, she cannot just be outside. So she needs to be inside and she needs a way to not, you know, potty all over the house. And so most rescuers will use human baby diapers with goats. It took me a while to figure it out, but I have to say, I'm a pretty good goat diaperer now. I change her diaper throughout the day and I use baby wipes to wipe her up just like you would with a human baby. And also like a human baby, she does wear onesies. Diapers won't really stay on a goat unless they have some kind of clothing holding it in place. So you'll see people use little goat pajamas, little onesies. Um, she has a couple of incredible custom outfits made for her by some of her human friends. So this one was made by Sonia. She has another wonderful green one from Sonia. She she even has some overcoats made by Emily. She is really a queen of goat fashion. And she honestly doesn't mind wearing the clothing at all, as long as it's nothing that is restricting her movement, nothing that is going over her legs. 
And a few times a day, I will let her go without a diaper so she can air out and be au naturel and just be really comfortable. I'll take her outside and she'll get some sunshine and then we'll come back in and I will just supervise her when she's not wearing a diaper. But ultimately, definitely overnight and many times throughout the day, she does have a diaper on. The third thing I wanna share is how goats eat. Like orphaned kittens, she drinks from a bottle and goats have a special nipple attachment that you can secure on top of like a standard plastic water bottle. Okay, it's time to eat. So I'm gonna show you guys how she eats. She's really excited. This is the special goat nipple and this can fit on top of like just a regular plastic water bottle like this and whoa! And when I feed her, the nipple is going to go in sideways, and then you tilt back. And you feed them straight up like this. And just like kittens, she does eat around the clock. Right now, she eats every three to four hours. What does she drink? You guessed it, goat milk. I warm it up for about 30 seconds before feeding it to her. It's so cute to watch her drink, but it honestly is a little sad to me because people intentionally breed goats for their milk, then take the babies away from the moms so humans can have the baby's milk, and then I end up with an orphaned baby goat and I have to go to the store to buy the milk that was taken from a baby like her. It's kind of odd. It's really messed up and one of the reasons that I'm so against the dairy industry. And I think people just don't realize that cows and goats only produce milk when they have a baby. And that in order for humans to have the milk, they have to take the babies away from the mom. That milk is for the babies, it's not for us. So I would definitely never drink cow milk or goat milk because I'm not a baby cow or a baby goat. But I will tell you, earlier this week, I almost put goat milk in my tea. Ugh. I was reaching for oat milk, and I thought that the goat milk was oat milk. It looked really similar. And as I was about to pour it, I was like, oh my gosh, there's a G. It says goat milk, not oat milk. Yikes. Anyway, after she eats, she's very happy, and she tends to just go back to sleep. So fortunately for baby goats, they don't even need a formula. It's easy to find the milk that is created for them at the grocery store. It's just a shame how it gets there. The fourth thing I've learned about baby goats is they can get into everything. They will jump on all the furniture in your house, your couch, your table, your bed, they will get into everything. Andrew has been cracking me up with some of his moves that he's been doing with her. So I like to take her on long walks outside so she can get some of that energy out, but inevitably she's still going to parkour all over the house at one point or another throughout the day. And since baby goats can get into pretty much everything, you do need to be conscious of goat proofing your house. She is really fond of trying to nibble on things like fake plants or real plants or cat toys. She'll like chew on tissues or I caught her with an entire roll of paper towels. <sighs> You really have to be careful. The final thing I've learned about baby goats is that they are really friends of everyone. They are so loving and trusting and they will run right up to a new person or animal to say hello. While she's been here, she's met a dog, she's met cats, she's met kittens, she's met pigs, and she has met a ton of people and she will just run right up and say hi. So 
Uh, it's really beautiful to see the friendships that she forms, but also you need to be a little bit careful because she doesn't really have stranger danger. She will just kind of say hi to everyone. So since they are so vulnerable, you wanna be a little bit cautious about making sure that um, they're kept safe from any animals that can harm them. So I'm really enjoying getting to know her and fostering my first kid. She'll go to her forever home in just a few days and I'm so happy that she's one of the lucky ones. She's a goat who will get to live out a happy life on a ranch with other goats where she is not going to be harmed just because of her species. You know, she is a boar goat, which is a breed of goat that is typically used for meat and they're killed at just three to five months of age. So she's one of the lucky few who's going to get to have a really happy life. And it means a lot to me to be able to you know, be part of her head start. So I hope if you have the opportunity to foster a baby goat that you will have learned something from this video. It's so rewarding and, and it honestly is really fun. And even if you don't get a chance to foster a baby goat, I hope that this video has opened your eyes to a little bit of who they are and hopefully it inspires you to make compassionate choices for goats and other animals. Because little Phoebe here is just as deserving of our compassion and consideration as any other animal. Don't you think? I love you, Phoebe. Okay, bye, Phoebe. Thanks for taking good care of me. Love you forever. Come visit me when I get older. Oh, yeah, I can't wait to see. She's going to be so beautiful. She's going to be all around. Yeah, farm girl, proper farm girl. Have a good life, baby!